welcome back. I've got a fun experiment for you today and we're going to be looking at the property of waves. This experiment is known as the rubber cord experiment. So let's look at the experimental setup we've got here. There's a few bits to explain. Firstly, I've got a signal generator here that creates electric waves. It feeds into what was the back of a loudspeaker. So that's an oscillator which is going to move up and down at the frequency that we feed into it from the signal generator. This is a piece of rubber band or rubber cord. It goes over the end of a pulley and down towards the floor are some weights putting some tension on the rubber cord. So the first experiment we can try is a bit of a dull one but it's worth showing you. If you pluck this just like you would a guitar string or perhaps bow a violin string, you'll notice that every time you do it, if you do it quickly or slowly or somewhere else, you pretty much always get the same shape. You get a hump in the middle, an anti-node where it's vibrating the most, and you get nodes at either end where it's not vibrating. I wind up the musical people in my classes by saying, you don't need any skill to play a musical instrument. It knows what note to play. The length of the string, the material and the tension it's in knows what note to play. And never mind how you do it, it will always produce the same shape. So the next thing to do is to get the signal generator to do that vibrating for us. And if we do, it's a bit of a mess because we're vibrating a little bit at the far end. But let's turn the frequency up, the wavelength down. And as we turn up the frequency, you'll notice suddenly there's a point where we get that shape again. We get an antinode in the middle where it's oscillating the most and we get a node at either end where it's not really moving very much. In other words, one half of a wave seems to fit on this. So what we'll do is look at some of the other experiments we can do and try and explain them. So we've got it oscillating nicely at that frequency. Let's turn up the frequency of the oscillator. And if I get the frequency just right, we get another shape forming on the rubber cord. We get what looks like two loops. In fact, if you look carefully, it actually looks a bit like one wave. It goes all the way up and all the way down. But let's see what happens if we go up to an even higher frequency. And you'll notice now we actually get three loops forming on the rubber cord. So I'm tempted to go further and see what happens. So you have to get the frequency just right, but if you do, one, two, three, four loops forming on the rubber cord now. But you'll notice that they don't have as large an amplitude as the three loops or the two loops or the one loop. The more we get on the rubber cord, the lower the amplitude. Now this is going to take quite a bit of explaining. So let's try and explain what's happening here. I'm going to keep the explanation fairly short and simple because there's an awful lot going on here and it's both a GCSE and A level practical and certainly at A level there's rather more you need to know about it. But this phenomenon is known as standing waves. In other words, it's easier to see when I go up to make the two loops that it looks like there's a sort of wave trapped on this that isn't going anywhere. But in fact, that can't be the case. What's actually happening is when we shake at this end, a wave travels down to the far end and reflects. But of course, as it reflects, it inverts, it tips over. A little bit like looking at writing in a mirror that's inverted from side to side. So a peak of a wave travels along here hits the pulley at the far end, reflects, tips over, and becomes a trough. And as it travels back along the rubber cord, another peak comes and meets it. But if a peak's coming this way and a trough's coming this way, then the plus and the minus add up to make nothing. This point is called a node, 
where there's actually no vibration at all. But where peaks and peaks join, or troughs and troughs join, you get addition. In other words, you get an antinode or maximum amplitude. So we've got waves traveling up and down this and interfering with each other to produce this pattern that we call a standing wave. What we've got here is what looks like the first peak of a wave, half a wave. So this string must be half the length of a full wave. It has the length half a wavelength. So if we increase the frequency, we're reducing the wavelength of the waves we put on this, and let's just double the frequency. And at double the frequency, we can fit on two peaks, as it were. So here, you can see all the way up and all the way down, and so that's one wave, so we know the wavelength is exactly the length of the string or rubber cord between here and here. And if we go up in frequency again, we get a shorter wavelength, and that's one of my favourites, where we exactly fit on one and a half waves. Now, GCSE and A-level students know, need to know quite a bit about this one, and if you notice, this length here is one and a half wavelengths, so we know the wavelength, we know the frequency from the signal generator, and if we multiply frequency by wavelength, we get velocity. We get the velocity of the waves travelling down the rubber cord, and that's a fairly standard GCSE experiment. A-level students need to know, of course, how these waves are formed by waves travelling down, reflecting at the far end, and then meeting the next wave that comes along, producing a standing wave pattern. There is one more experiment you can do to show that this is a node, a place where it's not moving, and this is an anti-node where it's got maximum amplitude. You get a piece of paper, and it's quite tricky, but you can sometimes just rest it on there, and it'll stay pretty still. But try and put it on an anti-node, and you lose it straight away, because there's a very large amount of oscillation there. So, I hope you enjoyed that experiment, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.